Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefined Show for Adorama TV, I sit down with Australian artist and print competition chair, Tony Hewitt, while we discuss the art of challenging the assumptions about what we see. Check out this fantastic episode. What are the genres that you have been shooting in and well, shooting in well? Well, I've done, I was going to say a thousand weddings, but you corrected me because it's 987, so hmm. I was 13 so short. Close. Yep. I've got one coming up this okay. year. Okay, so you'll be down to a dozen. young lady, she was seven, and I did some work for her parents, and um, she always said that she wanted me to photograph a wedding, so I got a phone call about oh. a month ago, and she oh. says, I'm getting married, and I'm going, That's so really? Cute. I don't do weddings anymore, and she goes, you're doing mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I so am. That's cool. So I did weddings. I did. I've done thousands of portraits. So we still have a mm -hmm. portrait studio, mm -hmm. and I do. It, where exactly? In Perth, Western in Australia. In Perth, yep. So that's Hewitt Studios. That's with my wife. Yeah. And we do babies and families, and mm -hmm. about seventy percent of our family portraits are past clients. A lot of them are past wedding clients. Right. So Incredible theatre. That's why I look portraits. at people today, and I think don't get don't get too caught up in. Um, you know, shortcutting relationship building with your clients. Don't just automate everything. Don't make it so, you know, technical and online and no contact because you're not only doing a job, you're building a foundation for a lifetime right. in a career. Yeah. And we see so many people coming to this industry now that don't stay around very long because mm. they find it harder once, once you know, you get over the honeymoon period and you get over the adrenaline that drives you along and you've got to actually work. Yeah. Um, but for me, I've had that, and so we do that. I have a lot of commercial clients now. So I went from lots of little commercial clients to now I have maybe half a dozen big commercial clients. Yeah. Where th they, they provide a big chunk of our income through the year. Regular ongoing work. But I'd love to talk to you about the commercial work because I think some people would be interested in what I do with yeah, commercial work because it's very different. Yeah. And then, of course, there's my landscape and fine art. But the thing I find quite... I used to get annoyed when I was starting out because people would call you a wedding photographer. Hmm. They say, oh, you're only a wedding photographer. I said, no, I'm a photographer. Yeah. Oh, right. And then next day, you know, I say, you're a wedding, oh, you're just a wedding photographer. I said, no, I'm a photographer. Did they actually say just? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I stopped entering wedding in competition because I thought, damn it, I'm You not. don't want to be typecast. No. So yeah. I started entering portrait and then it was like, oh, so you're a wedding portrait photographer. I thought, damn. No. <laughs> so I entered landscape and illustrative and then I just And then it was too wings. long to say it all. So they just said, so you're a photographer? You achieved it. I'm an image maker, like yeah. you. you know, you're yeah. fantastic at what you do. Thank you. And so now I've started to understand, after all these years, what it is that I like to photograph. Like, who am I as a photographer? Mm -hmm. Which comes out of who you are as a person. But some of us find that out really young. I mean, I know you're pretty switched on on what you do and what your goals in life are, both with camera in your hand and without a camera. Mm -hmm. But some people don't find out till later. And you fight things. You think, I'm supposed to be like this. I'm supposed to be like that. Um, I'm supposed to be um, doing what Jerry does. I'm supposed to be doing what such and such does, you know. And then you realise if at some point, hopefully you get to a point where this is what I do. Yeah. And it's okay. I started off in, when I was at school, I did really well with mathematics and science. So, yeah. like, I was 96% in physics and maths and things like that. But I loved art. And... In your, my photography, what I see, if I look back on my wedding work, if I look back on my portrait work, simplicity mm. is a concurrent theme. Just runs through everything I do. Yes. And design and abstraction and geometry. And I've seen it over and over, seen it in my so portrait work. So bringing in all that. So that my, now my fine artwork is my chance to sort of say, this is, this is who I am as a photographer and I'm comfortable with it because mm -hmm. it's who I am as a person. It's actually been with me since I was little. Yeah. And there's things we all do. So the other thing that I do that's been with me since I was little uh, is I grew up as the oldest child of an oldest child, the oldest grandchild. So I was in charge of kids all my life. Yeah. So I love people. Right. And I'm used to working with people. I'm used to sharing and looking after people and being on stage and all of that stuff like you do. Mm -hmm. And that's not something you go and learn to do or choose to try and do. You just, that's it. That's who yeah. you are. Yeah. Without a camera, without someone filming, you would still do what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, it's inherent to you. Yeah. So yeah. now with the fine art, I'm at a point where those pictures are more me than anything. Yeah. Ever. And it's, it's a cool way. I love, I love making people think. I love challenging the way they see things. So what better way than to view the, the world, the planet, from above? I love the ocean. Mm -hmm. So I'm a beach guy. I love, you know, whether it's fishing, surfing, diving, kayaking, body surfing, all of that. So all my exhibitions tend to be around water and coast, but simplifying 
um, that really thin boundary between where we live our lives and where we have our fears. So this is where I get really deep with my stuff. Mm -hmm. So like I have pictures of the beach and it might have tracks coming through to the sand and on, this, on the beach you'll see all these umbrellas and people in, on towels and you know, bodyboards and all of that. Then the water gets deeper and deeper. So literally it's just a picture of the beach, yeah? Yeah. People look at that and they can relate to it as being symbolic of life because in Australia we live our world, mostly we work in a city, we work in an area that is you know, pressure, stress, all of that sort of stuff. And then we escape on the weekends or whenever we can through those sand dunes to that, that thin boundary between the deep water mm. and work. Right. And that's what that beach represents. People get there, you know, you're down to your bathers and you jump in the water and it's like... <sighs> but the deep water represents something else. It also represents our fears because particularly where I live, it's the shark capital of the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you swim out even 20 or 30 metres, you start to be conscious of what's down there. Yeah. So that's just an example of what an ocean, like a beach shot, might mean for me. So I photograph it and I'm thinking there's a beautiful literal shot. Yeah. There's the dynamics of a great photo, colour, balance, blah, blah, blah. But to me there's more. Because one of the things I've learned over the years is that people value something when they can truly connect with it. Mm. We had a chat today, earlier, briefly, about soul in pictures. Yeah. And that, to me, what soul in pictures is. Can you, can you create a visual that somebody at a deep level looks at and doesn't even necessarily understand why? They just go, wow, that's me. That's my life. That's something that I don't know why, but it means something to me. Right. Not just pretty. Well, and that is one of the things I mentioned to you was that there's, this, that there's such an apparent soulfulness in your fine art landscape work. Um, would you use the word landscape? Yeah. Uh, I'm, by now you know I don't like labels. It doesn't I know, I know. Labels I, I'm don't thinking bother me. that as I'm saying. Do you know, like people come into my exhibitions and they're printed on a beautiful rag paper and mm -hmm. I do not exhibit them with glass over them. We, we might have one or two to show people what they look like, but the bulk aren't, have no glass. Right. So people can look at the pictures and they can fit, see their tactile. But they'll look at them and they'll say, are, are these really photographs? Hmm. And I don't really care. And then I'll get photographers say, these aren't really photographs, it's kind of crazy. So people look at them and say, they're not photographs, they're paintings. And the photographers say, they're not photographs. And I'll look at them and go, they're photographs. That's yeah. what I took them. Yeah. But, you know, take it from where But fine art landscape's probably the way. But, but the gallery now look at my work and they just basically say it's fine art. Okay. So, so we're just going to try just fine art. And well, like I said, they said, most people come in and they, they question whether they're photographs anyway. And yeah. Like, Who cares? Yeah. I'm not really a purist. I, I really appreciate the camera artistry, you know, mm -hmm. in-camera artistry. And I'm, I'd say I'm pretty good at capturing a picture in my camera. Yeah. But I'm also pretty good in doing post-production. The reality is most of my fine art landscape does not have much post-production. Right. It's pretty much what the camera sees. And then I bring out the tonality, I bring out the contrast, I bring out the saturation where I want to tell the story. Right. So I'm all about using the raw file and expressing my narrative the soul, the feeling that I had when I was in that environment mm -hmm. to share it. How do you, how do you um, literally take these photographs? Okay, and so can I drop brand names? Yeah. Okay, so I use Phase 1 XF system. Mm -hmm. I have an 80 megapixel bag, that's the IQ280, and Schneider lenses. Most of my aerials are done with a standard lens, mm -hmm. which for a medium format is 80 mil, but for, say, 35 mil users, it's 50. Okay. And uh, usually out of a helicopter or a plane, Okay. I don't use drones. I've never used a drone. I've dr flown one for 10 minutes for fun. Are there drones that could take that large of a camera setup? There's up? a couple of drones that carry phase one cameras if you okay. can afford the insurance. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so for me, to use a drone um, is akin to an artist or a painter um, having a robot paint for them or asking someone else ah. to hold the brush ah. and then telling them a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. It's the same with competition prints, and I have no problem, no judgment. People send their prints to someone to do the work for them. Right. All my competition prints, I conceive, I shoot, I edit, I. Print. You want to have the hands on. Absolutely, all of it. Yeah. I'm a control freak. <laughs> when it comes also known to, as when it, an artist. <laughs> yeah, when, when it comes to my art, where I am really personal. Even the only thing I don't do is cut my own mats, but I won't let my framer put the prints in the mats. I, I will be to the millimetre because I. I've judged so many images, I've, and when I say that, it's I've been 
you know, exposed to so many images as a maybe, judge. Maybe share your, your role when you talk about judge so many okay, images. Okay, so, I'm, well, as you know, I've been chairing some judging rooms here for well, quite a few years now. I've mm -hmm. judged here on and off over 12 years. Mm -hmm. I'm the current Australian Awards Chair. Mm -hmm. So I run this, I did basically what Jerry does for WPPI. I Jerry for, Gannis does for WPPI. Yeah, yeah. So I do that for AIPP. Yeah. And uh, AIPP has like a ton of international recognition. It's not just like that Australia thing. <laughs> It's a huge I think, competition. I think our country punches above its weight for photographers. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Well, it's because you get the light. That's why. Is that what it is? Have you not heard that before? And I thought it was It's talent. only because of their light. I thought it was the tail <laughs> and the water. So, um, and I've judged, yeah, all over, all over the place. So plenty of exposure to looking at yeah. pictures as a judge. Um, a lot of online competitions and things like that. The other thing is that um, as a speaker, you, because you have to actually consciously go through what it is you do, mm -hmm. it reinforces what you know and what you don't know. It reinforces yes. what you should do, you shouldn't That's like do. Teaching. You know, there's absolutely teaching, yeah. sharing, mentoring, all of that. So when, so, so when I'm looking at taking my pictures, I want that camera, coming back to that, in my hand. I, the camera's got to be, you know, we talk about get to the point where your camera is an extension of you. Yes. Right? Yep. To me, if I go through a drone, I've got all this technology between me and what it's seeing. And I, I, I can kind of see how I could one day use a drone maybe, Yeah. but I still feel like I want the brush in my hand. Yeah, I understand that completely. Thank you so much, Tony. I really appreciate that. I'm looking forward to our next episode where we dig even deeper into these mind-blowing images. Check us out here next time on Adorama TV. And do not forget, you can subscribe to learn and experience more than you ever thought possible here on Adorama TV.